Right, hello everyone, hello and welcome to technically a replay, but a brand new let's play nonetheless. I am of course Immortal Mark, and um, yeah, I think any gamers out there will probably know exactly what this game is and what it represents. Um, I mean, you're going to see exactly what it is in a minute. But there is a difference this time, a big difference. I, no, it is not the fact that the title is by Hedge 2, not Redeemed 2. It's not that. It's because, uh, well, yeah, this is Resident Evil 2, but we're the difference. This is the Resident Evil 2 high definition mod, um, or the seamless HD mod as it's known. Um, and what that does, it changes all the pre rendered backgrounds, all the character models, um, all the FMV sequences, all the doors everything to high definition crystal clear um and, and i mean the proof is in the pudding with this i mean just with the way it looks um i'm not going to show you gameplay just yet um just because i don't want to yet um but yeah so i've been meaning to replay resident evil 2 for some time actually uh, now, how I came across Resident Evil, well, it started off, although I got £30 for my birthday. This was a very, very long time ago. I believe 1999, I think, something like that. And I had gone to what was, well, what is game now, but what was Electronic Boutique. Uh, and I went into there and I spent my 30 quid. It actually might have been the year 2000, actually, I'm not too sure. And I remember I went with my brother, I went with my mum. My mum just potted around, she didn't really know what she was looking at, which is fair enough. But my brother being, you know, my brother and 10 years older than me, he would, you know, he'd look around and go, oh, Mark, you know, is, is, is a good game over here, try this, yada, yada, yada. And he pointed out both Jurassic Park, The Lost World, uh, which was pretty good, actually. I mean, I haven't played it for many, many years, but that was all right. Uh, I got Army Men 3D. And I got Resident Evil, the first one. And I got Resident Evil because he pointed it out to me and said, you know what, Mark, look, you got zombies in this. you got giant spiders. It has shotguns, flamethrowers. And as a kid, I really wanted that in a game. Because I was... I don't know what you, how you would prefer it. I was exposed to the, the classic... Um, so I'm just readjusting my headset. To the classic... Um, George A. Romero films. Sorry, two seconds. Oh, God. All right, there we go. Yeah, I was exposed to the classic George A. Romero films. Um, uh, you know, like Dawn of the Dead, Day of the Dead, you know, that kind of thing. Plus other, like, really low-budget zombie films as well. Uh, so I fell in love with Resident Evil. So I played the first Resident Evil. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Didn't really didn't complete it. I was too young at the time to know really roughly what to do, but you know, still liked it and enjoyed it. I just like the fact that you could kill zombies in it. I think I was just fascinated by that. Then a family friend uh, looked after me when I was younger, whilst I wasn't well from school, uh, and uh, the family friend's uh, son, who I'm also a family friend of, uh, had his PlayStation there, and, and she said, you know, play that. You know, you're off school, play that, you know, keeps you busy, effectively. Otherwise, it's just re-watching GMTV and other shit like that. So, I think I know which one won out of that. And I played Resident Evil 2, and I fell in love with it. Uh, every time I went around that, I wanted to play it. Um, obviously, we, we didn't go around too often, but when I did, I wanted to play it. And... Um, Fast forward a little bit later than that, and I went to a place near me to locate Resident Evil 2. I had enough money to get it, and I wanted to buy it. And But the only copy they had wasn't of Resident Evil 2, but Resident Evil 3. And I was a bit gutted by that, but then I looked on the back and I thought, well, hang on, it's still in Raccoon City. It's on the street still. It's got zombies in it, and I haven't played the third one. I played the second one. I haven't played the third one. So I bought it. Uh, and then eventually after that I got Resident Evil 2. So despite this out of the classic three, this being my favourite, I got this one last. Funny that, isn't it? Uh, but the way this game works, uh, I'll get onto that now actually, 
is there are two characters, Leon and Claire. And they both have, well, this Resident Evil 2 has an A side and a B side. Um, and there's basically, imagine two sides of the same coin. You know, it's still the same coin, but two different viewpoints of that, and two different events that kind of collate into that as well. Uh, what I do like to do is start off with Claire for the A side and finish off with Leon's B side. Uh, we will also look into uh, the fourth survivor, if I can unlock that. Uh, and I believe there's some extra game modes that we can also look at as well. But this is, in high definition, a seamless HD project. And this is Resident Evil 2. Let's get cracking. Resident Evil 2. Oh, and by the way, I've upgraded the sound on this. That is part of the mod as well. So it's got a crisper sound to it. A bizarre incident occurred in the outskirts I, of an I American I bet you guys must recognize that. That is the original city. zombie we encountered in Resident Evil. It was later revealed that the terrible disaster had been caused by the T-Virus, a mutagenic toxin created by the international enterprise Umbrella Incorporated for use in bioweapon experiments. Excuse me, the Mars, Raccoon drink? City Police Department's Special Stars Unit immediately began investigation in the affair. Must admit, this is The Christmas case was apparently fun. closed, thanks to the efforts of STARS members Chris Redfield By and the Jill team Valentine. that made this. But the Umbrella oh, Corporation's experiments were far from finished. Oh, that FMV, look how crispy it is! Nice bike. Ass. I'm finally here. Why do you find it a bit strange? She's just here to find her brother. She's got a fucking knife strapped to her chest. Yeah, oh yeah, you can actually read and see some of the signs. <laughs> Motor detergent. Motor detergent. That guy's a maniac. Why'd he bite me? Guys, I'm What about this? Hello? Is anyone here? Hello? Uh, hello? Oh, fuck. Sorry, I bothered you, okay? Just don't come any closer. Are you Fucking listening? hell. That actually looks so much better. I don't know how they managed to upscale this. I really don't know. Wait! Don't shoot! Get down! Oh, fuck yeah, Leon. You can't stay out here. Head to the police station. It'll be a lot safer. There! Nice squad. Okay. Probably wondering why there are subtitles on this. It is because it... Uh, this uses uh, the Source Next version, which is the on? Japanese version. I in town, uh, and the whole place went yeah, Force Next is has it. Out. You're a cop, right? Yeah. What well, fucking gave it job. away? The uniform, Great, you silly huh? cow. Name's Leon Kennedy. Nice to meet you. Mine's Claire. Claire Redfield. I came to find my brother, Chris. Oh, uh, she's going to keep saying that throughout the game, by the way. I have to find my you open the glove box? Sure. There's a gun inside. Better take it with you. Oh, fuck no! me. Yeah! Fuck off. Oh shit. Yeah. Bit. 
You okay? Still in one piece. <gasps> I used to find this bit so cool as a that it was a zombie driving a truck. I was so amazed with that. I'll meet you there. Okay. Right. Oh shit. So let's just check what we got first. So this is the Browning HP manufactured by FN Belgium. It uses 9mm Parabellum rounds. We also have the knife. A combat knife. It could come in handy. Ooh, and we got the lockpick. A lockpick. I can unlock the simple locks with this. Very good. Any files? Nothing. But yeah, look how crisp this fucking is. Um. But yeah, this is our inventory screen. Obviously, any items that we have equipped will be uh, on the top there. We've got maps we can look at and also files, certain documents that we do require to solve puzzles. Uh, we've got our condition, which shows, or the ECG, as it's known as on the original Resident Evil, shows that we are fine. We've got the fine stats. We go fine, like yellow caution, orange caution, and red equals danger. Uh, and obviously, the top left is our... Uh, we do have eight slots for items. Uh, that I think increases a bit later on depending on what we pick. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, these little cunts can be uh, avoided. This is so fucking crisp. Nothing's like by like, missing or like bit rate or anything like that. And run around you. You smelly little cunt. Right, now prepare to be hit on by Kendo. Freeze! Who are you? What are you doing here? Oh, uh, I forgot it was the bow and arrow. Uh. Here he goes. Sorry about that, babe. No. I thought you were one of them. What's going on in this town? Hold on. I ain't got no clue, darling. By the time I noticed something was wrong, <laughs> the entire city was infested with zombies. Jesus Christ. But don't you worry, girly. You'll be <laughs> safe you in worry, here. Don't you worry, girly. I'm keeping a I'm close eye on things. things. Jesus wept. Um, I am going to start collecting items now. Uh, for those who may or may not know, paper date is September 18th, it looks irrelevant. Um, I mean, oh, here we go. Because if I was to collect anything from now until the RPD station, um, I would encounter the zombified Brad Vickers. So he said he has stopped breathing, I quickly looked at that. And we're going to quickly run away. Uh, oh god. Yeah, hang on bullets, that'll do nicely. The case is broken, but there's nothing useful for this. Shit. Shit. Right. Let's make our getaway. But yeah, we wouldn't locate the zombified Brad Vickers, which actually showcases how he became zombified in Resident Evil 3. Does that say... Oh. That's later on, isn't it? I'll point that out near the time. Now they will try and bash down the door. It won't happen until we trigger this over here. Now, I think we've got some handgun rounds over here. 30 handgun rounds. Oh! Let's check out this bow gun then. So let's check this out. A powerful bow gun, primarily used to hunt large game. 
God. You do have to kind of kill these fucks, don't you? Oh. Right. Uh, can't really use the bow gun yet. You can actually see the individual items on here. Oh. But yeah, um, I will showcase that in another video. I'll quickly start up again and just show you what the zombie Brad looks like. Uh, we do obtain the star card, I believe, a lot quicker. Um, but he does take a lot more to kill. It's actually wise to try and get him to lunge at you and land and try and bite your feet because it's an automatic kill you'll get on him. Zombies for the most part, well, some most part, are easier to dodge. But you do have to be quite skillful at it. Oh, Mr. Bean's mini, very nice. Oh, fucking hell. Um... I think there's a document on here, but I could be wrong. Oh god. Real shame. No sign of life. I really wanted to see if we could pick up some sort of health or some other luxury item, but I guess not. Oh fuck. Right. Oh fuck, I didn't mean that. Oh. Just run past these, there's no point in trying to kill them. There really isn't. Halfway down here, a couple of zombies over there, but let's uh, head down here. Yeah, this is where the zombified Brad Vickers would appear. Quats over here. Because I think if you kill them... I think if you kill them it gives you a new view of um, the RPD... Yes it does! That is fucking wicked, look at that. But I think if you try and go back there, yeah, it takes away that camera angle. So that's something to be mindful of. Anyway, let's enter the RPD. Let's go and see our little pal. Hang in there. 
Are you the only officer left in the building? Oh, I'd love to see his transformation in um. Claire, Claire Redfield. In a HD. I'm looking for my brother Chris. We lost contact with him over ten days ago. Chris, Jill Barry. Every last Stars team member has disappeared. We should have listened to them. We what should happened? Have listened to them. About two months ago, there was this incident involving these zombie-like creatures in a mansion located in the outskirts of this city. Chris and the other Stars members discovered that Umbrella was behind everything. He looks at the risk of their own lives. But no one believed them. Are you okay? Don't worry about me. (laughs) Just rescue the survivors in the other rooms. My god. Your brain's hanging out of your asshole. Are you okay? Key card. You should be able to unlock the doors in the hall with this. Now go. But just go. Okay. You're trying to make me suck the gun. I'll be back soon. Suck the gun, you pleb. Yeah, poor old uh, Marvin Branner. He's not doing so good. Oh, but he had enough strength to get up and fucking lock the door behind me. Poor shit. Uh, yep, more handgun bullets. Yes, please. Oh, hang on. What's this? Oh, ink ribbon. Right. I want to use a computer, and I'll, if, if memory serves me correct, I've actually got a bit of a gripe with this computer. Yeah, I do have a gripe. Look at the, um, the test bit on the bottom left. Why is it in the picture of a zombified face? And yet they've also got a picture of some sort of laboratory. <laughs> Unfucking believable. Like, we didn't have a clue. Yep, all side doors are locked and released. Um, they did actually try and justify why the RPD was the way it was. And one of the justifications was that it used to be a museum. Like an art museum, I think. Could be an art museum. I don't know. A museum nonetheless, anyways. And uh, that's why it's as intricate as it is. Oh, here we go. First file. Here we go. So, police memorandum. Uh, 23rd of August, 1998. This letter is just to inform everyone about the recent movement of equipment that has happened during the re- uh, precinct's rearrangements. The safe with four-digit lock has been moved from the Stars office on the second floor to the Eastern office on the first floor. 2236, Raccoon Police Liaison Department. Fair enough. Okay. Let's see what's in here. Absolutely nothing. So basically, what the item box, what that serves is, it acts as a way for you to store items for later. Because you only get, at first, the eight item slots, it does become increasingly difficult to juggle every item that you have. So that does act as a very good way of, um, of you know, having all your items, so to speak, and knowing when to take them out and stuff. Right. The desk is locked, we use the lock pick. Fuck yeah, of course I will. Oh, first aid spray. What the f- Alright, I swear I just saw something, that's fucking weird. Alright, uh... Oh well. But yeah, um... I'm not actually too much a fan of the bow gun, um, if I'm really being honest. Oh, what's it? Ah, oh, fucking hell! I'll get to you in a minute. An open close switch for the shutter. It cannot. Be, it can't be activated since the cord is cut. The head is missing. <laughs> fucking hell! Watch out, Poirot's about. Yes, Claire. The head is fucking missing. It seems to have been twisted off. Twisted. Yeesh. What was the door? It's locked. Uh, a spade is etched under the keyhole. I always say it a bit too late after it happens.
Oh fuck! Yeah, guys, this is, these are the liquors. I love it. The fact that it's in HD though, that is beautiful. Oh, even the slobbers in HD as well. Now the key with this is they are blind. Shit! Oh, he fucking lunged for me, the cunt. Oh! Oh, but yeah, those are liquors. Uh, they are blind, they have long tongues, they can, long tongues, and they can launch you with it. Um, I can't, but yeah, they are, they are pretty gruesome in this. In the Resident Evil 2 remake, which is beautiful by the way, what a game, also what I'm going to say, um, they are even scarier. And I really do mean that, they are fucking scary. Anyways, this is the operation report. September 26th, the Raccoon's Police Department was unexpectedly attacked by zombies. Yeah, that would probably be the last of my things to happen to a police department. Uh, many have been injured, even more were killed during the attack, our communications equipment was destroyed, and we no longer have contact with the outside. Shit. We have decided to carry out an operation with the intent of rescuing any possible survivors as well as to prevent this disaster from spreading beyond Raccoon City. The details of the operation are as follows. Security of arm armaments and ammunition. Chief Irons has voiced concern regarding the issue of terrorism due to a series of recent unresolved incidents. On the very day before the zombies attack, he made the decision to relocate all weapons to scattered intervals throughout the building as a temporary measure to prevent their possible seizure. Unfortunately, this decision has made it extremely difficult for us to locate all ammunition caches caches even. Uh, it has become our top priority to recover those scattered munitions. To unlock the weapon's storage, as stated earlier, it will be extremely difficult to secure all the ammunition. However, a considerable supply still remains in the underground weapon storage. Unfortunately, the person in charge of the card key used to access the weapon storage is missing. Oh, fuck me. And we have been able to, unable to locate the key. One of the breakers went down during the battle and the electronic locks are not functioning in certain areas, typical. It has become a top priority to restore power in these power room and in the power room and secure those locks. Recorder David Ford. So operation report, September 27th, 1 p.m. The West Barricade has been broken through and another exchange ensued. We sheltered the injured in the confiscation room on the first floor temporarily. Twelve more people were injured in the battle, recorded David Ford. Uh, additional report. Three additional people were killed following the sudden appearance of an as-of-yet unknown creature. This creature is identified by missing patches of skin and razor-like claws. However, its most distinctive characteristic is its lance-like... capable... Wait, what? As its lance-like capable of piercing a human torso in... Wait, what? However, its most dis distinguishing characteristic is its lance-like... I think they missed out the word tongue there. I've never noticed that before. Capable of piercing a human torso in an instant. Their numbers as well as their location remains unknown. We have tentatively named this creature the Licker and are currently in the process of developing countermeasures to deal with this new threat. What I'm going to say is this. Countermeasure, two shotgun blasts. Good as gold, that. Has someone drawn a fucking knob on the fucking thing? Look! What is that? Looks like a bulbous knob with no bowls, or really long bowls sticking down. Bears. Right. Ba bum ba bum bum. Ba bum ba bum bum ba. Ba 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 ba. The music in this, whoever's made this, is incredible. Ah, uh, and all your paintings above. The title is A Sacrifice to the Hellfire. Yeah, we need the, the lighter for that, and we don't actually have the lighter. Right. 
Oh, be steer clear of the windows, by the way, because zombies will uh, stick their hands through and try and pull you through. Now, if memory serves me correct, there should be a zombie on the right, a lady zombie on the left. Oh, lady zombie on the, on the, on the right. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Two green herbs for the win. Right. Right. I'm going to use you straight away. Now, I need to explain what herbs are, actually. And no, it's not marijuana either. But basically, there are three types of herb. We have the green herb, which is just, you know, your normal kind of, you know, your health, essentially. You have the red health, uh, the red herb even, which... The red herb on its own you cannot use, but if you combine it with the green herb, it increases the potency of the green to add that as a full heal. You can also combine three greens if you wish, or two greens if you wish, to kind of increase health that way. Uh, a blue herb is for when you're poisoned, because you can get poisoned on this game, and that will take away the poison effect. Uh, and you can also can combine all three, red, blue and green, which uh, will basically essentially be a, a entirely complete full heal. Anyways, we're about to enter the dark room, which is a room used for uh, basically sorting out photographs for the police. More ink ribbons, very nice. What's in the locker over here? It's locked, a special kind of bollocks. But yeah, any time we get uh, any camera film, we would take it here and we develop the film. Right, so what we're going to go ahead and do... Yeah, we're going to save the game. Perfect. And in the next video, we will continue forward and route around the police station and see if we can find any more survivors. I will see you next time.